Hytale is one of the most anticipated games in the world, but its years of development are shrouded in mystery. Welcome to the Hytale Iceberg Explained, a deep dive into everything there is to know about the upcoming game from its secrets, deep lore, development, and even obscure community references. There's a lot more than just a trailer to talk about, with some pretty cryptic topics on the list that will really test your knowledge. There's six tiers to go through, starting with more well-known topics and descending into the more unknown or unusual stuff. The Announcement Trailer the two-minute trailer for Hytale was released on December 13th, 2018, and has since gained over 60 million views in the five years it's been up on YouTube, not to mention other social media platforms and through various news sites. It's easily the most recognizable item on the list and likely the first thing most people are shown when told about Hytale, with everyone specifically remembering the beta sign-up page that was shown at the very end. Hypixel Server Hypixel originally started as a team running a Minecraft server in 2013, which quickly grew to become the most popular minigame and multiplayer experience in Minecraft's history. Led by Simon Hypixel, they've pioneered unique and iconic game modes such as Warlords, Bed Wars, and their own crazy version of Skyblock. Not to mention they've also been a fundamental part of the game's community for many years now. The team behind Hypixel eventually grew in size, and those who chose to develop the game split off into a separate company known as Hypixel Studios. The original Hypixel team and Minecraft server are still going to this day, however. Blog Posts After the trailer drop, the team kept us updated on their official website through blog posts, featuring screenshots, gameplay footage, and breakdowns of mechanics, as well as keeping us in the loop development-wise, these became a weekly treat for the community and a good way for the team to get early player feedback. A large portion of the community that still remains to this day built up around the hype of these blog posts waiting for them every week and theorizing each time that more information was released. Although they still contained heaps of sneak peeks, blog posts eventually became much less frequent towards 2020, going to monthly and then to every half a year, much to the disappointment of eagerly awaiting players. Postcards Postcards were select screenshots that the team started to showcase weekly in 2020 after they stopped releasing blog posts as often. The aim was to provide a briefer, more atmospheric look at different areas, creatures, and settings from around the world between the bigger development updates. This is because they didn't want to spoil the larger locations and mechanics of the game that early into development. Some postcards even celebrated holidays such as Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, and Halloween. Fans of the game analyzed the images to no end, and each time a postcard dropped, they would be there finding new mobs and all sorts of Easter eggs hidden in the background. Riot X Hytale this likely refers to Riot Games, creators of League of Legends, who acquired Hypixel Studios in 2020, after originally investing a large sum of money and showing interest in Hytale's early development. The team actually got offers from multiple big-name publishers during their search, but decided that Riot were their best option, and so the acquisition began. A Quebec, an iconic mob from Hytale which we'll discuss in a moment, can now even be seen on the Riot launcher. When the announcement broke, people went crazy. There were a lot of mixed opinions. Some were surprised, excited, while others were skeptical of what this could hold for the future of the game. Riot Games and their owner Tencent do hold a fair share of stigma. This entry in the iceberg could also be used to refer to the Hytale X Arcane promo that was livestreamed to hundreds of thousands of viewers in 2021, showing Riot talking about the game publicly and even revealing a bunch of new footage. Orbis Orbis is the main planet where the adventure mode or story mode of Hytale takes place. This planet was created by a powerful being named Gaia, who is now missing. However, her image is depicted by multiple factions across the unique and elemental-inspired zones of the world. As you can see, each area has a different climate and conditions which dictate the creatures and more intelligent factions that you may encounter there. That powerful being, Gaia, who I just mentioned, will also likely play a big part in the main story, or at least uncovering what happened to her will. Quebex. Quebecs are the mascot mob of Hytale, and they'll likely be some of the first things we interact with in the game. Quebecs are similar to trees in that they're made of wood and start as a seed, slowly growing into a more trunk-shaped body, eventually turning old and transforming into a tree themselves. You know this faction is definitely for saving the planet. 
They share a special connection with Gaia, the god of the world, and are totally in tune with nature itself. The team have stated there's a lot more to learn about these little critters though, along with the rest of the world of Orbis. Noxie Noxie is the CEO of Hypixel Studios and is now the person that pretty much everybody looks to since Simon Hypixel stepped down to focus more on the Minecraft server mentioned earlier. Since being appointed, Noxie has spoken often about the game on Twitter, even polling users for feedback on several different features. Ready when it's ready. This phrase is an amalgamation of several different statements made by the Hytale team in relation to the launch of the game after it was delayed. On several occasions, after high demand from the community for a beta or release date, the team chimed in by stating that they intend to truly advance the genre in a meaningful way, which honestly does just take time. Quote, We receive hundreds of messages every week asking us to release Hytale as soon as possible, but we firmly believe that the best thing that we can do is take advantage of all the resources at our disposal and make the game as good as it possibly can be. That's what we mean when we say that Hytale will be ready when it's ready. Things are moving fast and every day we're getting closer, but there's still a lot of work to do. We don't want to announce a start date for the Hytale beta until we're confident that we can hit it and we're not in a position to do that just yet. Expectations after the trailer launched were much higher than they had initially anticipated, and after securing investment, expanding their team into the hundreds, and redeveloping areas of the game so that they can launch on an even wider scale for mobile and console, it meant that the game was now inevitably going to get pushed back. Hashtag Hytale Fanart the community that has grown around Hytale has some truly incredible creative individuals. Just searching the hashtag Hytale fanart on Twitter will reveal years worth of art pieces, models, animations, real-life creations, and so much more. Seeing all these possibilities visualized by the community is one of the big things that motivates the team, and I personally have never really seen a gaming community this passionate about a product that's not yet released. Gaga Pigeon. From the over 30 minutes of gameplay and footage we've seen of Hytale so far, one of the most iconic and memed clips is of a player disguised as a pigeon, brandishing and throwing a dagger at a target before looking back at the camera menacingly. As expected, the communities on Discords, Twitters, and Reddits made it their mission to express their love for this creature. I've seen the pigeon used as an emote in several memes, and it's even reappeared several times in official Hytale posts. Varen. Varen is an incredibly powerful being that dwells either on or near the planet of Orbis. He is the dark and mysterious antagonist of Adventure Mode. We know that we'll be fighting against Varen or at least his forces throughout the world as we've seen them referenced a few times now. Brutish creatures known as Varen Spawn. Orbis even seems to be inflicted with some kind of plague or dark void magic curse. It's taking over the land and seems to be connected to Varen himself. EULA or EULA. This stands for End User Licensing Agreement, and in short, it's basically a set of guidelines and rules for how users can use your game. Minecraft always had a EULA, but once Microsoft bought Mojang, they began enforcing and made changes to it. They placed restrictions on how servers were able to monetize, for instance, which meant that that Hypixel Minecraft server from earlier, they faced an 85% drop in revenue. And whilst these changes were totally within Mojang's right to make, it was a wake-up call for Hypixel as a company. They quickly realized that with this, other contributing factors as well as limitations on the platform, that they were quote, building their house on someone else's land. And ultimately, they decided to move forth and concept Hytale. Mr. Beast Mr. Beast is arguably one of the most well-known people on the planet right now, but why is he on this iceberg? Well, we all know Jimmy has a gaming channel and made Minecraft videos even before he was popular. That's why some were pretty excited to see that he was very much aware of Hytale, even replying to their tweet about being acquired by Riot Games. Who knows what type of Hytale content the Mr. Beast crew might make. Gaia Lost as mentioned earlier, the creator of the world of Orbis is called Gaia, who at the time of players arriving has gone completely missing. It's largely believed that Gaia is asleep or drained of her power in some way, sealed in a kind of void or isolated dimension. This is all based on concept images, however, and we're unsure whether this is Varen's doing, or perhaps she sacrificed herself to try and stop him or some great evil in the past. 
All we truly know is that she has been lost, taken, slumbering somewhere unknown. Lo-Fi Remix Hytale has released all sorts of music from their original soundtrack over the years that players have listened to time and time again, but Slammer gives them a whole new twist. Specifically, the Lo-Fi Remix album, which features a bunch of tracks, has become a fond favourite of both the community and the development team themselves, even being shown on screen in the Hypixel Studios office. Burning. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a hard time saying this one. Burning Quebex. As we said earlier, Quebecs are made of wood, and with them being depicted as innocent, small, cute critters, of course it was only a matter of time before the internet wanted to destroy them. Setting Quebecs on fire is likely up there with some of the highest requested features for the game, with several memes springing from it. The team have even joked at this point about how they might make the Quebecs inflammable just to troll players even more. Thankless Thankmas is a charity event hosted by Jacksepticeye every year in December, where he calls all creators and communities to fundraise for charity on their own platforms. Seeing this as an opportunity to rally the Hytale fans, in 2020, several community members gathered together to plan a stream that was ultimately dedicated to the love of all things Hytale. With a few other games scattered in between, many appeared, including team members in the chat and even Noxie himself, who joined the live call and surprised the organizers as well as thanking the community for the sentiment. This event happened again the following two years and has now raised a grand total of $27,000. Creatathon in addition to Thankmas, in 2021, community members Radoons, Exodus Ablaze, and Crimson Crow gathered together to organize an event that celebrated the creatives and artists of the community. This lasted for 11 hours and involved plenty of wholesome and hilarious moments that brought people even closer together during the long wait. Vertical Slabs Players in Minecraft have always wanted vertical slabs, and another more well-known addition to Hytale will feature the ability to place half blocks sideways. Among many other building block types, this is the one that players have been most excited about as they imagine the extra layers it would bring to their creations and all the new possibilities. I'm personally a big fan of this, having made an entire video discussing why vertical slabs are important and why they should have been in Minecraft to begin with. Hytale Domains When the game was first announced, the hype was unlike anything you could believe. Gamers from all around the world flocked to start planning their adventures and content in this game. What videos would they make? What fun things could they livestream with friends? Ten years worth of content and ideas from Minecraft, but in Hytale instead. It was exciting, and they could potentially even build on many of the things that were a bit more limited in other games. Due to this huge surge in attention, it was natural that Hytale domains would begin getting sniped. People were making websites and wikis and server browsers and forums left, right and center. There were so many Hytale domains created in 2019 that the community even began to joke about them. Most of them probably redirect now, but it's interesting to look back and see what kind of websites people assumed would be needed for the game's community. Kairos is Tessa among the many pieces of early concept art that we got for the game's world and creatures was this image depicting two humans, one named Tessa and a darker figure named Kairos. We know next to nothing about them other than that the armor they wear is that of the Orbis officers. It's believed that we'll likely meet one if not both of these on our travels or at least learn of their story somehow. But a big theory in the community is actually that these two are one in the same. Due to the matching purple eye color and the fact that purple is associated with void magic, something that tends to corrupt, the going theory is that perhaps at some point Tessa turned evil and we're actually seeing two versions of her here. Statue High Five if you follow Hytale team members individually, then you may have spotted videos of these quirky-looking Quebec statues. Custom-carved and planted outside the Hypixel Studios office in Derry, team members make a habit of high-fiving these guys whenever they'd show up for work or visit from around the world. A cute little Hytale ritual. Avatars more lore here, this refers to the actual player character in the game. Avatars are powerful magic beings that have the ability to create and shape worlds. It essentially gives us an in-universe way of explaining how we as players can make and play in different worlds and servers. 
As the Avatar creates a world, they can also limit what other Avatars can do in them. If Gaia is also an Avatar for example, then that explains why in Adventure Mode, with Gaia being lost, we're left with no godlike abilities, instead needing to survive. It's because this world's permissions are limited. Gaia is almost like another player character, which is really cool if you think about it. Orbis Officer Orbis officers have been referred to a few times throughout blog posts and are likely what both Tessa and Kairos are, or, or were. We see Orbis officer insignias which appear throughout multiple gameplay shots, and we imagine it likely to be an order created by or established after Gaia disappeared. However, we do not know whether any members remain or if we stand to become an officer ourselves throughout the adventure. Turbo Bolt the Turbo Ball refers to an easter egg that can still be found to this day at Hightail.com forward slash super secret page. Upon searching this, you'll be greeted by a fun little gif of a mob from the game, a chicken riding a bull. Photosynthesis Simply put, the reason this scientific term is on here is because way back in 2019, during a pretty unknown Discord interview, Noxy revealed that Quebex, being based on plants, don't actually eat food. They consume sunlight for energy and water for nutrients, a very plant-like biology. Void Magic Void Magic refers to the overall distinctive glowing purple stuff we've seen in many different screenshots and gameplay videos, most notably as liquid, mysterious plants and manifested as creatures. In fact, it seems some humanoids have even been cursed by this purple stuff. Void likely lines up with what dark or shadow usually represents on an elemental chart, the direct opposite of light, essentially. Void magic corrupts and is used with evil intent, possibly even created by Varen and wielded by Kairos, among others. We see that this void magic is likely also used by more nefarious factions around Orbis such as the Outlanders, who have potentially misused this magic for so long that they've mutated and become monstrous. Ultraverses. One of the many lingering questions about Hytale's adventure world will be if there are any other planets. During early concept art, we were shown what they call Ultraverses, with Orbis being one of many different planets. The planet nearby, known as Nexus, looks frighteningly filled with void magic, potentially where Varen is from, while Numdrasil to the left seems more inspired by Gaia and the temples of hers that we've seen. Of course, we can see the other planets, but we don't know how many Ultraverses will be accessible on launch, or whether these are completely different worlds entirely with different stories to tell. Either way, there will still be rich lore to be found there. Noxie once stated that Tor Berlin, this rocky red planet here, has a group of creatures with a pretty gnarly story that they hope to tell one day. Personally, I think it's safe to say that with years of development, their narrative designers have likely been able to really fantasize about the possibilities for expansion with these planets once the game has released. Mantling Mantling refers to the block jumping mechanic revealed in the Hytale X Arcane promo, which showcased the ability to jump four blocks by grappling to a ledge and pulling yourself up. People obviously got really excited to see this because of the extra potential it could add to parkour maps and different types of obstacle course. Team Interviews To be honest, this could refer to several different times that the team has been publicly interviewed about the game, most notably Noxy, the CEO on the channel Legacy Gaming, as well as the COO Sean on the channel Willcast more recently. Hypixel Studios community manager Budokat has also made several appearances on this channel. Konami Code Another easter egg here, when visiting HypixelStudios.com, if you enter the classic Konami Code, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, the art of Gaia on the front page will transform into the evil Varen. A nice use of a classic gaming easter egg. Cubic Chunks in late 2022, a team member accidentally leaked an image featuring a set of items on their desk, which happened to also include a poster listing important Hytale world terminology. The poster revealed that the game would make use of cubic chunks, a method of laying out and generating the world that lets the game run very quickly and have an almost limitless build height. 
The poster reignited some discussion around the game and how worlds would function, as many had speculated about cubic chunks before. It was also quite nice to see that the team members were being sent posters like this. You can really tell that a lot of thought had gone into the visualization of this terminology to make it more easily understandable for all departments. Wake up, babe. This refers to the community member Mine, who has an obsessive habit of posting a Wake Up Babe reply anytime the Hytale account tweets anything. I thought I would include this because pretty much every eagerly awaiting fan probably relates to this sentiment in some way. C++ C++ is the language Hytale will be coded in. This is a turn from their originally stated intention of using C Sharp, and that change was actually made in order for Hytale to be cross-platform for PC, mobile, and console. The change did cause development to be delayed a bit more, as the team would need to go back and rewrite a lot of the progress which had already been made. However, many in the community believed it was a necessary sacrifice for the betterment of Hytale's future. Dinosaur Caves Shown only a small number of times, concealed beneath the fiery wastelands of Zone 4 are rich Jurassic jungles, overgrown and inhabited by dinosaurs of all kinds. It seems they live alongside or at war with a sloth-like faction known as the Slothians, and it's unknown yet if we will be able to tame or ride these beasts. EGX Showcase a lesser-known presentation the Hypixel Studios team hosted was at EGX in 2020. Presented by team members Sean and Chris, this video showcases their initial plans as they were continuing to seek out investment after the trailer received an overwhelming amount of media attention. In this, they broke down the journey Hypixel had taken thus far and their goals with Hytale. It's cool because throughout the presentation, you can see some very early in-game screenshots, including a deeper reveal of early Zone 3, and by looking at this, you can really tell just how far the game has come since then. Trork Baby Now, Trorks are a brutish creature that have been shown to live in opposition to the Quebecs. They're essentially a combination of trolls and orcs, and in December of 2022, a concept image was released teasing a baby troll, which up until then was a mob we hadn't really seen or even considered. Now, alone this isn't too unusual, I know, but pairing this image with the fact that the community manager, Budacat, warned that the brutish and angry-looking trogs may not be all that they seem at first glance has got the community theorizing on this unusual faction once again. Buddha Poop but a cat is also the focus of this next point on the iceberg, as this simply refers to the gameplay footage that revealed cows pooping and the player's ability to pick up and throw that poop at one another, apparently. Merch. Now, this probably refers to the many items of Hytale merch that we've seen over the years, from hats, shirts, stickers, and physical postcards, to mugs and even signed memorabilia. Although there is no official game merch available for sale yet, the team have a great relationship with their supporters and often give out small items at conventions and during events. Ferran Backstory Ferrans are a fox-based faction that you find in Zone 2. They're a bit grittier than the Quebecs because they live in harsh deserts, and their backstory is even more heartbreaking. Through concept art, we've come to learn that these little guys were imprisoned by evil, hive-minded, bug-like creatures known as Skarrax. Since then, many have managed to break free, but they now wear rings with the sigil of freedom to remind them of the hardships that built their newfound courage. Flash at Work Flash at Work is a community in-joke surrounding Hytale creator Canadian Flash, who coincidentally always misses Hytale news and updates, as he just happens to be at work. Quebec Figures For the very first Thankmas charity event, when Noxie surprised the organizers, he also revealed that he would be sending out a special paintable Quebec figure to the participants as a thank you, which delighted the community, and many revealed on Twitter afterwards how they had painted them. The fact that the team provided these minifigs is a testament to their love of things like Dungeons and & Dragons, and really shows how they've been inspired to create this world. Our Place you may not be aware of the R Place project, essentially a Reddit hosted event with a canvas that allowed users to place one colored tile every few minutes for a limited time. Naturally, as this wasn't the first one, thousands of online communities scrambled to leave their mark. But with only so much space, it was a test of wits, patience, and perseverance. 
Luckily, thanks to several dedicated fans, including community member Powerbyte7, and aided by the One Piece subreddit, the Hytale community were able to leave their undamaged, timeless mark. Not once, but twice on the canvas. Plus a Hypixel logo too, if you want to count that. Edge Exclusive Cover now, while it's more common knowledge that there was a magazine that featured Hytale a few years ago where they allowed a journalist to actually play and try out the game, the magazine edition even being able to be ordered physically with an awesome Gaia art. However, most people do not know that an exclusive second version could also be bought by Edge subscribers with a limited edition cover, this time showing a player surrounded by Skarrix in the caves of Zone 2. Pumpkin Horseman this mysterious and elusive character was an easter egg spotted in a Halloween themed postcard, riding a horse but with a pumpkin for a head. It was quite some time ago, so newer fans of Hytale likely have never seen this. Yule Log While most of the soundtracks released for the game can be found on Hytale's official YouTube channel, the Christmas Yule Log video remains unlisted, with the only current way to access it being through a link in a tweet from the Hytale account which means far fewer have seen it. In fact, it only has 8,000 views despite being such a great piece. I'll leave it linked in a pinned comment. You should definitely go and check it out. And while you're down there, consider subscribing. Fake Game Despite the 60 million views on the trailer, all of the gameplay and the years of detailed communication provided by the team trying to set expectations and explain any delays, plenty of people still believe the game to be fake. A complete ruse made up to drum up hype for some weird reason. The more common iteration of this is that Hytale won't release as expected. There's a fear that it just won't be as popular, that the hype is dead, it won't be as adaptable, or just won't appear as what was promised. It's a real fear to have and one that many more have considered since the delays in development of the game. Craft Studio Craft Studio was a platform used to create models for voxel games. Similar to programs like Blockbench or ZBrush, creators used these tools to form the environments, items, and creatures that we see in many games. Craft Studio was used as a third-party modeling toolkit by the Hypixel Studios team as they began to develop the game and create assets. However, eventually, the studio decided to actually hire the developers of Craft Studio, Mora and Nicolas Gautier, in order to evolve Craft Studio into a specialized and unique toolkit designed specifically for Hytale. We now know this to be called the Hytale Model Maker, and has likely been used to create every item, entity, mob, and animation we've seen in the game. Sand Empress One of the lesser, if not least known about beings in the game, is the Sand Empress. It's only ever vaguely referred to in a concept art, and we've seen her markings on a page of symbols. People have speculated that this could be a giant, queen-like Skarrick-type creature, or even an imprisoned, powerful Ferran. We know of some markings and symbols, as I mentioned, and that she resides in Zone 2, potentially within a prison, but really nothing else has ever been revealed to us. Only time will tell why such a thing was constructed in order to contain her powers. Secret Demo now, with the game having been in development for years and likely showcased many times to investors at this point, it is believed that there is a playable secret demo version of the game out there somewhere. It could be something that is more an experimental build, a pre-alpha for testers, or for new team members to play in order to get to grips with the basics. We know team members spend their time running around in the game during meetings, and we know a journalist and even some YouTubers have had a chance to check the game out. So could there really be a demo or an alpha floating somewhere out there? Fork Wall on the 25th of January, a YouTuber named Gonkdroid began uploading himself throwing a fork at a wall every day until Hytale came out. Surprisingly, their dedication actually held up for a decent amount of time, uploading for 70 days. I was actually really excited to see how the wall would turn out once the game was eventually released, but unfortunately, in April of the same year, the user stopped posting. Probably for the best. Mosshorn Milk on August 2020, a blog post was uploaded to the website featuring a new mob, the Mosshorn. Following this, the creature received a lot of community love. So much so that the official Hytale Twitter account acknowledged it with even more Mosshorn images. Of course, memes ensued and another fan creation suggested that you could even milk them, which perhaps might have been too far and I know for a fact that some people in the community haven't been able to get that image out of their head. 
the only beta key. There is only one currently known person in existence who is 100% confirmed a Hytale beta key, and that is someone named Justin who livestreamed himself saying Hytale 10,000 times shortly after the trailer released. He completed this successfully and was later DM'd by the team to confirm that he had in fact earned himself a beta key for his dedication. This was way back when Hytale was expected in 2021, so Justin has had to wait quite some time and is probably a lot older now, but still likely remembers that he's sealed the deal when it comes to the beta. Secret Q&A In 2021, the Hytale community got wind that the team were going to be hosting a live Q&A for university students. The public were still allowed to attend, provided they applied for the link, and during the talk, the team revealed a few tidbits about their past. They spoke for a long while about how they got to where they were today as a company, and they were certainly aware of the community's presence, so they were sure not to reveal any details about the game itself. However, with the fact that you could change your nickname in the chat room, I remember a lot of Hytale community members having fun, and this being a fond memory. Memory Mirrors Speaking of memories, memory mirrors are a theorized feature in the game that will allow you to see into the past. These were spotted and referenced only one time, very, very briefly, in a very, very small part of a concept art, seeming to appear within a place called the Temple of Gaia. We can only imagine how these mirrors have evolved since then, how they actually fit into the overall story, or if they're even in the game at all anymore. But their name does suggest that they could be windows into previous story moments, possibly even a method of time travel. BTKA this is a fan-made Twitter account also known as Burn the Quebecs Association, an account hell-bent on burning Quebecs once the game releases. They consistently post memes of burning Quebecs and consistently try to troll me and other Quebec lovers on Twitter. I've put them this far down on the iceberg because they deserve to be buried as deep down as possible. Quebec Broodmother There's a reason we keep this one locked deep down in the dark at the bottom of the iceberg. This abomination is a fan-made mob created by Skarrick Lynn, as a combination of both a Quebec and a Skarrick Broodmother, a mob referenced from early concept art, together creating this truly horrific image that genuinely makes my stomach churn, the creepiest of all the community creations and fan art. Why? Because it just won't go away. It's been made into a model, iterated on numerous times, often referred to amongst the community and is a recurring joke that I just can't get out of my head. I can only imagine what other crazy creatures and combinations are thought of once the game finally comes out. Consider subscribing, continue smiling, and thanks as always for watching Quebec Corner. Stay safe and keep free.